Good morning, and I must uh, start this uh, 10 minutes presentation with a thanks to Dr. Ganapati and, uh, of course, the Apollo Hospital for giving me a chance. I'm actually a, a, an admin out uh, being an engineer, aeronautical mechanical engineer amongst the doctors. And this uh, particular talk, um, let the slides be on, uh, talks about the use of uh, drones in healthcare. It is a small window, uh, unlike what you've been talking about, you're trying to reach uh, millions of people for healthcare. But this is something for an emergency for that sp small uh, segment of people who want uh, organs in, in, a, in a jiffy. And this is uh, something to do with uh, that uh, particular window of healthcare. Um, as far as the drones uh, are concerned, we have enough enough uh, experience in the Indian uh, context. We have drones for um, the defense, the next one. Um, you can see a snapshot of uh, the uh, drones which we have developed in India, uh, I have just a list of them, and these are all developed in house and then um, being deployed by services. But there are several other similar uh, drones developed for civilian applications, and the next one will uh, show a few of them. And so you can see that uh, this was actually all in, built uh, under government funding, DST and DRDO, uh, a plethora of uh, drones for civilian application. You can see even the uh, flappers or the the, uh, the ornithopters, fixed wing vehicles, multicopters. But what I wanted to tell you our recent uh, um, endeavor uh, for. Um the ambulance services, uh, medical uh, supplies, for emergency medical supplies, and we are now trying to look at the drones for possible organ transport. The next one, and you can see that uh, scenario abroad, in the global scenario, you can see uh, these drones, uh, variants of them, being used for almost everything that you can think of, uh, pollution, mining, disaster, I mean, you, you can see almost everything that, that is required uh, in an environment um, for uh, taking care of the societal applications, including disaster management has been done. All these things we have been trying to do in India with our uh, technologies, and this is not a big thing. I'll just show you quickly a video clip of how we did recently tried to uh, lift uh, organs, I mean, um, uh, use drones for um, uh, lifting organs or carrying organs, and also medical supplies. Next one. It is a small little clip, video clip. You can see the first one is the crop spring agricultural application, where a drone carrying about five to eight kilograms of uh, pesticide is uh, uh, spraying plantation, banana plantation. And there are also uh, uh, drones for monitoring water quality in aquaponics for fish and prawn culture. And then, of course, we have the exercise of lifting uh, medical supplies. And this is a 12-hand 12, 12 uh, helicopter, a 12 propeller helicopter, and it's just look at going up. And then we have an exocopter, and you can see how elegant it is. A simple uh, trained person uh, is not a, an engineer, but a workman who is able to land these things. So it was as simple as this. And this is something which we are very, very, uh, very happy about. We are, I also have another one, another small video clip, which is basically from uh, uh, next one. Uh, Chair, from, uh, from um, related to spying and military activities. CNN uh, video now clip in India, uh, from YouTube. Innovation you can see how a small little packet of medical, um, medical supply can be lifted without much of a problem drone and be able to and they land that the uh, at a place pre-designated. ...of transporting human organs, cutting time and saving precious lives. For longer time, they are the most viable for long-distance drone transportation. Well, actually today, yeah. So next one. Uh, if you if you look at the, uh, the the scenario abroad, we have quite a few of these drone applications for um, organ transport. Australia, uh, United States, and even many Europe European countries uh, trying to their best to uh, make a, a big uh, endeavor to look at this. This is the first example. The one at the bottom uh, here, left here, is the Chinese uh, um, attempt, and you can see it's a man one, which means it can carry about 100 kilograms of. Paper load, which is very good for an organ transport situation. And we also have the Canadian and European Cassidian Tannen uh, helicopter, which can take, for example, 50 kilograms and about 180, I mean, 50 kilogram payload and 180 kilogram, I mean, kilometer of range, which is a good option, a, a viable proposal for organ transport. I can push this from Chennai to Vellore, Vellore to Bangalore, and that is 
very easily done with this technology. And therefore, the next one. Uh, we have the four, our own attempt initiated, and these are the few examples. Apart from the payload range and endurance, we need to look at whether capability, all weather capability, safety, reliability, and more importantly, we need to look at the DGCA regulations that I think we need to have an issue, a big dialogue. Next one. And you can see the, uh, the limitation of the existing uh, quadcopters or multicopters is the batteries. They don't allow you to fly more than one hour of endurance. And, but we, can, we have a novel concept coming up. We push this uh, IC engine to drive generators, which will continuously energize the batteries. And I, I have think uh, there's no limit with reference to the range. And so this is what's happening. And this is not a novel idea. In fact, there is a Spanish vehicle, which is shown below, which is what we are trying to do. And therefore, to, in, a, in about a year's time, we should have an endurance of at least about five to six hours without much of a problem. Lifting about 25 to 40 kilograms is going to be indeed a reality. We also have technology which, with an helicopter, which is an unmanned helicopter. It's being attempted in defense establishments. We have developed this helicopter here, or Below. And these two experiences, I'm sure, should uh, realize, I mean, result in a dream helicopter which can do this organ lifting from one hospital to another one pretty soon. This is something important because what is uh, vehicle is one issue, but what is important is the the container, the organ container. Today we have a picnic box filled with ice. The the heart is, for example, packed is sanitized and is transported from a simple picnic box or a plastic box, and there are various of them, but this we need to be doing much better than this because the heart in this container, I believe, it can last for three hours, three to four hours, but we need much more time. If you see the next slide, this is what you're trying to attempt. A, a three hour uh, capable container, very lightweight, can be carried on a helicopter, the unmanned one, but what we are planning is a dream if you can do this and miniaturize that system, there I was showing the right, it is actually an active heart. It is warm. It is supplied with blood pumped at the right temperature. Uh, and it is kept alive throughout the journey. And therefore, it can last about 12 hours instead of three hours. It's a big, big uh, uh, dream. Uh, some of you may not agree with me, but this is just happening on the ground, in the lab. But why not miniaturize that and be able to carry in an helicopter is something which some may say it's a foolish attempt, but I think it's just possible. So this is what we're trying to do. Can we contain this? Can we make this smaller and be able to take on in an helicopter, an unmanned helicopter across the uh, range? And there are some couple of issues, which is the IT related issues. And we are trying to move much beyond visible range and about 150 kilometers. And therefore, what happens if there's um, an obstacle? Uh, in an unknown territory, in an unknown ground, if you're flying, we need to be able to look at uh, the obstacles, avoid them, and also we need, therefore, vision-based uh, navigation. And if the GPS is denied for some reason, whether or uh, you're flying through tunnels, for example, or between uh, mountains, then we have a possible denial, we, a GPS denial. And therefore, we need to be tracking the route of this, uh, uh, see that visually at this station. And therefore, we also have to have emergency landing because we're ca carrying a precious cargo. We don't want to lose them. Patient is there in the other hospital waiting for, and therefore, we need to make sure of some reason, somehow it should be airlifted. And therefore, these are the, some of the issues. Therefore, there are four uh, difficult areas to make these drones being able to operate, lift organs from one hospital to another one. Funding is not an issue, as long as it is, I mean, it's, it is a viable proposal. And, but the cost of technology and operation should be minimized. It should be affordable. And this is something which we are trying to do. In my opinion, technology is not a big deal. Payload, range, endurance, control, and cost is possible because we have got the backup experience in the country. And therefore, that is not an issue. But the issue is logistics. We need to have trained pilots. We need to have people from the hospitals trained to run these machines. And we also have to have the mechanics, the, the, the medical uh, technicians, being able to handle uh, these issues. One has to load it, one has to lift it, 
and unload it there and take it to the operating theater, operation theater. And this is something which we need to do, and it's not impossible. If you have a, a mindset, we can always do. There is one catch in the whole thing. We, today's DGA policy doesn't support uh, the, the, uh, the drones flying all over. And therefore, we need to look at rules and regulations. There are ethical and legal issues, certification and safety reliability issues. And therefore, we need to have a, a separate chat. I'm sure for a hospital, for emergency, for healthcare, DGC will be able to, we should be in a position to understand our needs. And I think that will happen. So in my opinion, there is no uh, big deal in handling, in conceptualizing, in realizing this uh, drone system for a very small, narrow window uh, organ transport situation. And I think we need to, uh, the cooperation, working together of hospitals and the engineers. We, we have been working on our own. I think it's not a good idea. And very soon, we need to have a brainstorming sessions with all the hospitals and see what exactly they want, they, they, how they can implement these things, even if it's available. I think that brainstorming session and a separate workshop for this issue is something which I think we must encourage and get going. I again, once again, thank Dr. Uh, uh, Ganapati and the Apollo Hospital for giving me the chance. I'm pretty certain we'll have a workshop on this exclusive topic separately uh, pretty soon. Thank you. Thank you very much.